All right, let's take a look at our lesson for today. We are going to talk about the other three trig functions that we really haven't talked about yet. So let's kind of remind ourselves where we were. If we see, just remember sine is opposite over hypotenuse, perhaps in another class, maybe your teacher taught you the acronym SOKOTOA. I'll just write it up here just in case. You know, don't know what I'm talking about. This part is for sine. It means sine is opposite over hypotenuse. This part is for cosine. That means cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And this part is for tangent. And this means tangent is opposite over adjacent. So, I mean, I even think about that, um, and I'm, I'm pretty old, so <laughs> um, I use Sokotoa myself. It just helps us remember the ratio. Sine, sine theta is the ratio opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. And also, we have previously spoken before that it's also sine over cosine, or the y value over the x value of our coordinate points on the unit circle. Okay, so now where we're going to go is for reciprocal. We're going to look at the reciprocal functions, the reciprocal trig functions. These are reciprocal. They are not inverse. Okay, they're not inverse. They're reciprocals where you flip it upside down. Right, just to rec recall this vocab word. So the reciprocal of two thirds is three halves. Okay, these are reciprocals of each other. You just flip it upside down. Okay, so that's what is going on over here. So if we focus on cosecant, now sine reciprocal is cosecant. I really wish they would have matched letters like sine with secant and cosine with cosecant, but they didn't. So it's not what you would like it to be. Sine is, um, sine's reciprocal is cosecant. So you can see here that cosecant is one over sine. So it also, it's um, ratio has flipped upside down. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, but cosecant is hypotenuse over opposite. So you see once we do the reciprocal, you see that, you know, not only is cosine, um, you know, the reciprocal of cosine is secant. So secant is equivalent to one over cosine, but the ratio flips upside down. Instead of adjacent over hypotenuse, it's hypotenuse over adjacent. Okay, we'll look at the last one. Now cotangent, tangent and cotangent, that makes more sense to me. Um, so tangent's reciprocal is cotangent. So you can see that those are equivalent. Tangent is the same as, uh, or cotangent is the same as one over tangent. And the ratio has flipped. It's adjacent over opposite. So has this uh, identity. Tangent is sine over cosine and cotangent is cosine over sine. Those are reciprocals of each other, okay? So we are going to do just a little bit of calculator work today, not very much. We're just going to look at these four questions down here. So hopefully you have your calculator handy. Um, I want you to note that on number one and two, see we've got these little degree symbols. So we're going to have to make sure that our calculator is in degree, degree mode, and I'll show you how to do that. Number three and four are not in degree. See, there's no little degree symbol. So that means these are in radians. All right, so let's go ahead. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our calculator and we're going to input tangent of 105. All right, so let's go to the calculator. Notice right here in this upper part of the calculator, this little word, um, DEG for degree. And we are in degree mode. If you have the new operating system, then you can just click on that and change it back and forth between radian and degree. If you don't have the new operating system, it takes quite a bit of, of work. Um, you've got to go to the home button. You have to go to your settings. You've got to go to your handheld settings. Cancel. We've got to go to our settings. We have to go to our document settings. And we've got to change the angle right here, you know, from radian to degree. 
that's what we would need to do if we don't have the new operating system. So if you don't have the new operating system, I encourage you um, to check with me and I will help you take care of that. Now we're going to go into degree mode because this first problem is degrees. So please don't type use these letters to type tangent. Please don't do that. Um, these are just like uh, just regular old letters. Um, these don't represent variables. So you've got to go to this trig um, little button right here. It's under the control button. And then we're going to scroll across to tangent. These down here on the bottom are not reciprocal functions. I know this is a little confusing with the negative one. These are actually the inverse functions, which we haven't talked about yet, but we will in an upcoming lesson. So we're just going to do tangent and we're going to type in 105. Now, in order for us to get a decimal approximation, which is what the problem is asking us for, we need to hit control enter instead of just enter. So enter gives us an exact value and control enter gives us the decimals. So let's see. So tangent of 105 degrees is negative 3.732. Okay, so let's enter that on here. So that's negative negative 3.732. Okay, now let's go to cotangent. We want cotangent of 30 degrees. Now that is a unit circle value. You know you could do that by hand, but we're going to get some calculator practice in. So let's go over here. We're still in degrees. We pull our trig menu down. We want, what did we want? We want a cotangent of 30 degrees. We still are in degrees, so we're good. Remember, we're going to hit Control Enter to get the decimal. So 1.732. Okay, 1.732. Now, I want to talk about um, on the calculator the huge difference between radians and degrees. It's really important that you have this in correctly because I want to demonstrate to you cotangent of 30 degrees, which is 1.732, is vastly different than cotangent, so it's going to pull out cotangent of 30 degree, or 30 radians, 30 radians. See, that is really, really different. So we've got to be very careful to make sure that we are in the proper mode before we just start punching numbers in the calculator. Um, you know, this is radians and this is not what they asked us for. They didn't ask us for 30 radians. They asked us for 30 degrees. Okay, so I just wanted to point that out. All right, now, now we're in radians, so we want cosecant of negative one. So let's go back here and we are in radians. So we're gonna do the trig, we're gonna do cosecant, and when you do negative, do this gray negative. Don't do the subtraction sign. Your calculator will not be happy with you. Um, so negative one, and again, control, enter, and we get our negative 1.188. Okay, so negative 1.188. And the last one, we're gonna do secant of 50 radians. Okay, so let's go over here. So we've got Secant, it's right here, of 50, and we are in radians, we were right here, so we're good. So we do control enter, and that gives us 1.0363, so 1.036. We're going to the thousands, okay? 1.036. Okay, and that's really all the work that we're going to do with the calculator today. Just uh, learning how to input those, switch back and forth between radians and degrees. Okay, so we have three kind of topics we're doing today. One is using the calculator, which we just did. The next one is uh, like number five. And then the third one is like number six. So let's focus on the second topic for today, which is figuring out what the other five trig values would be Given this type of information, we're given cosecant is negative 17 over 15, and we're given this interval for theta. Okay, 
So, step one. You know I like steps. We're going to draw a triangle. It's a right triangle. In the proper quadrant. So how do we determine what the proper quadrant is? Here is an idea. So if you draw a quadrant, let's see, we're going to go to negative pi over 2, which would be rotating backwards this way, right? Negative pi over 2 would be right here. And we're going to go to 0. Now see, we you can see that the fourth quadrant is surrounded by our little dots. So this is going to be in the fourth quadrant. We're going to draw our triangle in quadrant 4. Okay, so let's do that. Now here's the second thing we need to remember. So we're drawing a triangle in quadrant four. Second thing, draw the triangle with the x-axis as a side side of the triangle. Never use the y-axis as a side of the triangle. Never ever use the y-axis as a side of the triangle. That's probably one of the most common errors that I see. Okay, so we need to be sure we're drawing it with the x-axis as a side. Never use the y-axis as a side of the triangle. And our theta is going to be right close to the origin. So whatever tip of the triangle is right close to the origin, that's where the theta is. Okay. All right. So what? So we, we're doing good. We're doing good. Um, one last thing we need to note is that on these triangles that we're going to be drawing, the hypotenuse is always positive. Okay, so those are three things we really, really need to remember. Okay, so let's work on filling these numbers out. So we're in the fourth quadrant, great. I've got my triangle drawn with an x-axis as one of its sides. Okay, so let's think about cosecant. So cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, and sine is opposite over hypotenuse. That means cosecant is hypotenuse over opposite. Okay, so let's um, let's figure that out over here. So this negative sign is important, and we aren't going to write yet which one of this is the 17 or the 15 that it's with, but it's with one of them, and we'll we'll talk about why which one in just a moment. But first, let's get the hypotenuse, which is 17. And opposite, so I'm opposite the angle is over here, is 15. Now, I think you can see from the placement, or let me just make it even more obvious. Okay, I'm going to make it more obvious. So this represents our x value. That's the x value. We're in the coordinate plane, right? So we have x and y values. And this is going to represent the y value. Okay, so we have to ask ourselves, is x, well we'll do with x in a minute, is y positive or negative in the fourth quadrant? Down underneath the x-axis, is this positive or negative? It's negative. Okay, we need to be careful to be sure to put the proper sign with each side of the triangle. That's going to be really important. And to find the third side of the triangle, we just use Pythagorean theorem. So this is x. So x squared plus negative 15 squared equals 17 squared. So x squared plus 225 equals 289. So x squared is going to be, I subtract those, I get 64. So x is a plus or minus 8. All right, so which one are we going to use? We're going to use the plus or minus 8. Well, what is x in the fourth quadrant? 
Yeah, it's positive, so we're going to use a positive 8. Now once we have our triangle drawn with the appropriate signs on each of the numbers, we are ready to answer the question that they asked. We need the five other trig values. All right, so let's list them over here. So we want to find sine of theta. We want to find cosine of theta, tangent of theta. Let's see, we already have cosecant, so we want secant of theta and cotangent of theta. That's what we need to find. And we're going to do it by using our ratios. You know, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So Katoa, right? Opposite over hypotenuse. So sine is negative 15 over 17. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So 8 over 17. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So opposite is negative 15 and adjacent is 8. See, how are we doing? We're doing okay. We're just using the ratios. Now secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So secant is going to take cosine's ratios and flip them upside down. So secant is going to be 17 over 8. And cotangent is going to take tangent's ratios and flip them upside down. So cotangent is going to be negative 8 over 15. And there are our five trick values. Okay, now this is the third and last kind of thing we're going to deal with. This is finding the exact value, or we're going to state undefined. What does it mean to do the exact value? This means it's one of our unit circle values. Okay, the only way we're going to find an exact value, I mean without a calculator, is if it's one of our special values, you know, the 30, 60, 90s, the 45, 45, 90s. All right, so that's what's going on here. So let's draw our, you know, coordinate plane. Let's see, 225, 0, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270. So that's too far. So 225 is right here in the third quadrant. It's one of the 45, 45, 90s. Let's go ahead and write its coordinate points down. So we're in the third quadrant, x is negative, and y is negative. If you remember, the 45, 45, 90s are all root 2 over 2, either positive or negative, both x and y. Okay, do we remember which one goes with cosine and which one goes with sine? Because that's basically what we need to do to all of these, is figure, you know, make them some kind of a relationship with cosine and sine. So... If you recall, the x coordinate is cosine, represents cosine, and the y coordinate represents sine. Just, just as a reminder, we've talked about that before. So cosecant, cosecant is 1 over sine, right? So we're looking for 1 over sine of 225 degrees. So that's going to be 1 over, and sine is the y value, so negative root 2 over 2. And um, if you recall, fixing a complex fraction, a lot of teachers teach the uh, keep change flip, keep the numerator changed from division to multiplication, and flip the denominator, keep change flip. So my answer becomes negative 2 over root 2. And we don't need to rationalize, and there's no reason to do that. So just leave it unrationalized. Ooh. So tangent of 225, we already have our drawing over here with cosecant of 225, so I'm not going to draw it again. Um, but we, we, we're going to use this drawing to figure out what tangent of 225 is. Okay, hopefully you remember tangent is sine over cosine. Okay, good. So we look at our values over there. Sine of 225 is negative root 2 over 2. Cosine of 225 degrees is negative root 2 over 2. And, I mean, it's the same thing over itself, so that's 1. All right, very good. We're doing great. A couple more. All right, let's look at pi over 2. Pi over 2 is right here. Now, that's the quadrantals. If you recall, it's a vocabulary word. What is a quadrantal? So the quadrantals separate the quadrants. 
right? We know this is quadrant one, two, three, four, right? The quadrantals separate them. So this is a quadrantal. The X and Y axis um, are the quadrantals. So we know it's a unit circle. So this distance is one. We really shouldn't have to look on any kind of chart to figure out what the coordinate points are for pi over two. It's zero X and one Y. So there's our coordinate points. Okay, so tangent is sine, so we're looking for sine of pi over 2 over cosine of pi over 2. That's what we want. Remember, sine is the y value, and cosine is the x value. Uh-oh, is that okay? What is that number? 1 over 0. No, that's bad, right? That is um, undefined. That's not a thing. We can't have zeros in the denominator. Hopefully we understand that is not okay. So in this particular case, tangent of pi over two is undefined. Okay, last one. All right, so for those, those of us that are still not comfortable with negative rotations, Let's go ahead and take our negative angle measure and let's, you know, add 2 pi to it to pull off the negative rotations. Okay, so I still have a negative, so let's add another 2 pi to pull off all the negative rotations and that gives me pi. Okay, so that means that we are, pi is right here and we know that's on the quadrantal, so my x value is negative 1 and my y value is 0. All right, so let's remember what secant is. What is secant? So secant of 3, negative 3 pi is the same as 1 over cosine of negative 3 pi, which negative 3 pi is, is um, a coterminal angle with pi. So we can just look at those coordinate points. So we have 1 over, let's see, cosine is a negative 1, so that reduces to negative 1. Okay, and that finishes up our lesson for today.